Dr. Goenka, thank you for your time. Nice to talk to you. A wide variety of roles you play, lots to talk. So let's start off with the latest, DUV300. It was the responsibility for the Scorpio was the transition of the image. For the XUV500, it was a big bet of sorts because that kind of premium positioning from an Indian OEM, first time. Of, uh, what is the expectation, what is the responsibility that the TUV300 carries from your perspective? Well, TUV300 basically is our entry into the compact SUV segment. Uh, and we have taken a route different than what most other manufacturers have taken uh, to come into the compact SUV segment. Uh, what we have said to ourselves is that we are a SUV specialist. And therefore, we need to ensure that we maintain the purity of SUVs in some of our models. Of course, we cannot say that all our SUVs will be pure chassis-based SUVs, but in some of the models, we must, must maintain that. And we also did some customer research to understand uh, what the customers are looking for. And while there are a lot of people who are excited about the, the crossover kind of monocoque-based vehicle, but there is a fairly large number of customers who would like to have a modern looking with all the modern gadget technology features but a true SUV kind of uh, design which has a chassis base and a SUV styling, uh, right. a SUV styling and a crossover styling. Right. And that's the segment that we're looking at with UV300, uh, where, where we are in the compact SUV segment, the sub four meter, at the same time we are with, uh, with a chassis based uh, thing and the styling is uh, very much like uh, what we call true blue right. SUV style. Like we have uh, observed in any segment in the automotive industry, if you're not the first mover, the, uh, the product by the, the second or the third player ha has to have some really compelling uh, offerings to the consumer. In this case, uh, TUV we have seen, uh, you, you talk about uh, safety or uh, you are going to offer an AMT. What are the kind of uh, USPs that you think would be those compelling reasons? See, today, the today the segments uh, in many ways are getting uh, into micro definitions of yes. each segment having its own uniqueness. So while one can say that in a compact UV segment, we're not the first entrant, but if you were to look at what TUV300 has, I don't think it's directly comparable to any other compact UV. And to that extent, uh, we are the first entrant in a chassis-based SUV-styled compact UV. Uh, so I'm not aware of any other direct competition from, from that viewpoint. What we have tried to bring into uh, this compact uh, uh, SUV uh, that, that we have launched with TUV300, are uh, many features that go beyond what are currently on offer, certainly in chassis-based uh, uh, SUVs and in many other monocoque-based SUVs. For example, AMT you mentioned, this is the first uh, SUV of any uh, sort of prefix SUV, uh, which has uh, AMT in it, uh, and we're very happy with the way the AMT has come, uh, come out and the way it drives and everything. Uh, we have also worked very hard on safety, and safety has been sort of uh, in, in, in uh, uh, getting a lot of attention in the last uh, year and a half in India. The uh, Government of India also is pursuing safety very aggressively. The new norms have been, have been announced. Uh, and we have tried to bring uh, all the safety features into this product, uh, in fact, ahead of the new norms okay. by uh, two years. Uh, and in fact, we won't have had to meet them for four years. I see. Uh, and we have brought in uh, those norms uh, meeting, meeting here in this, uh, this thing. Also, we have looked at the, the new uh, star rating uh, that, uh, that has been proposed. It's not yet announced and therefore we cannot claim uh, any kind of stars because it's not announced yet. But from whatever is in the, in the draft right now, uh, we uh, are meeting in some variants the highest rating uh, that is there for the star rating also. So we are very pleased with the kind of safety uh, that we brought in. Uh, into this product. Other thing that we have done, uh, which uh, is something that we had committed more than a year ago, uh, is that even our lowest variant mm. has an option of airbags and ABS. And therefore, a customer does not have to spend a lot of money to go to the highest end to get airbag and variant. Mm. If you just want safety mm. and not have to get all the other gizmos that come, yeah. then one can only spend 30, 35,000 rupees and get the safety yeah, features in the vehicle. Okay. So even our lowest variant T4, mm. Uh, which comes with Q4 Plus mm. at a 30, 35,000 rupees price, uh, uh, mm. price uh, premium, you can get the dual airbag and, and ABS. So talking about safety, you're saying that some variant of TUV would also uh, meet the five-star rating, is it? See, I cannot uh, call five-star five yet because it's not yet yes. notified, yes. but from whatever is in the draft, yes, yes, we are meeting that. Perhaps, perhaps we are the only, this is the only vehicle in India today mm. that can claim to have met uh, the, the requirements of uh, uh, the, the BNV SAP, uh, the, uh, even before even before the, the announcement has been made. That's a very good move, in fact, and I think increasingly uh, 
consumer are getting more and more aware, even the lay consumer are going, getting more and more aware about safety. And uh, I think this is a good move by... Uh, well, especially when you're going to call TUV 300 tough yes. UV. And yes. then we have to have the safety yeah, features. As it is, Mahindra vehicles are known for a very nice safety case, even without the features of yes. uh, safety uh, airbags and, and ABS. And when we add the safety technology of airbag and ABS, it even makes it even even say much more safer a uh, vehicle than than otherwise. And when you say about you no, know, this is uh, one part of the strategy of you know, remaining sustaining your position as a SUV specialist. How do you see this segment growing uh, in the coming years uh, in India? Uh, so if you look at uh, first of all, if you go back four years, say 11, 12 to 14, 15, in this time frame, the share of SUVs in the passenger vehicles has gone up almost 5-6 percentage point from about 17-18 percent share to about 22-23 percent share. So, so generally there is a move towards SUVs. But one could argue that what we call SUVs, are they really SUVs? Because the, the, the dif distinction between what was it's clearly SUVs and clearly passenger car mm -hmm. has become diluted yes. and, and they are kind of merging. Yes. Right? And therefore many of the newer vehicles which are, which are SUVs are styled like cars which mm -hmm. have a little bit higher uh, ground clearance, yeah. and some little bit more aggressiveness in styling yeah. and, and, and some along the line the difference starts getting very blurred. Uh, and since these are being counted as SUVs, uh, the SUV segment is, is growing. The second trend is moving towards the smaller SUVs yeah. uh, away from, uh, not away from but in addition to uh, the XUVs uh, uh, size, uh, size SUVs uh, and that compact SUV space certainly is growing. Yeah. So even within the SUV segment, as we had talked about the UV1, UV2, the UV1, which is the compact SUV, is the one that is growing. Uh, and uh, many of the most of the recent launches in this segment have been in the compact UV segment. Uh, so, so if you look at within the UV segment, clearly uh, the share that will be taken by compact UVs uh, as time progresses will be higher uh, than the share taken by the and the traditional larger lenses. Which is where your S101 will also play a key role. I mean, Two, uh, two launches in quick succession. Yes, uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. So therefore, uh, while while we have uh, made TUV to be the the rugged uh, chassis based uh, compact uh, UV, S101 will be uh, different. So so I cannot imagine any customer comparing S101 to TUV 300. Yes, with two totally different. To totally different profiles. Totally different. Vehicles. And also, I mean, one would also argue that uh, Mahindra being a player, uh, such a strong player in the SUV segment, this emerging SUV, the compact SUV segment, has been a late entrant of sorts. So, uh, there a lot of catch up to do before you kind of, you know, kind of have a leadership position there. Why this delay and uh, how, how do you plan to kind of you know, catch up? Well, we have talked about that in the past that, uh, yes, indeed, the, the, the whole trust on compact uh, UVs came uh, perhaps a year before. Uh, what we had anticipated when we started developing that and therefore our products are coming this year. Uh, two of them, uh, as you are aware, the TUV300 just launched and S101 coming later in the year. Uh, and these two products kind of uh, uh, bring us again in the thick of it uh, with uh, about six different SUVs to offer. Unlike most other OEMs, we do not have one size fits all SUV uh, offering. Uh, we have different SUVs for different uh, price points, different needs uh, in SUVs. And uh, that's what we intend to do with S101, Bolero, uh, TUV300, uh, with Xylo, uh, Scorpio, and XUV. So we have fairly wide range, and then to top it all, Rexton from Sangyang Stable. And uh, in, in this whole uh, uh, drive to in the compact SUV segment, uh, do you plan to replace the Quantum maybe because uh, you know, with the S101 and TUV kind of playing their roles? Yeah, so so uh, TUV300 becomes a compact uh, uh, UV space uh, in, a, in a major way. Uh, the Quanto, in fact, <laughs> frankly, was the first entrant uh, in the industry in the in, in the compact UV UV space, but uh, it didn't uh, uh, hit off as well as we thought it would. Uh, and therefore, and Quanto has its own sort of a different uh, different offering in terms of the styling features that we are offering there, uh, and 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 therefore we don't intend to take it out. Uh, though the bigger volume will be coming from TUV 300, and Quanto will continue to have a niche presence in that segment, uh, and we do intend to keep, keep that.